So today I got something nice for you, kind of a bit of a surprise. I got myself the Tamron 10 to 24. Yeah, you heard me right. 10 to 24. I'm sure that's the craziest wide angle lens you ever see in your life. All right, without wasting my time, let me just get this out of the way. I believe it was just there for decoration, man. Is it still? My friend, delete yourself. Much better. Okay, so um, I had this lens for some time now. Not, not so long. I recently got my hands on it. It's one of these international products. So I recently got my hands on it. And when I got it, I didn't want it to make a straight review. I mean, I've had a couple of wide angles in the past. You guys do know that I've had a whole... If you don't know, just check my previous videos, man. So, yeah. um, This one coming in with 10 to 24. Man, like, it's so insane. It's crazy. This happens to be um, the first wide angle I've, I've ever owned. I mean, I've had a couple of wide angles. Like I said, I've had 16 to 20, a whole lot, a whole lot of wide angles. But 10 to 24, I mean, 10. That's crazy. That's the widest I've ever got my hands. And I think 10 will actually be the, the least. I don't think there is any one that goes less than 10 i don't know but if i if there is just let me know so yeah um this is the tamron sp 10 to 24 millimeter f 3.5 to f 4.5 a whole lot of numbers on the lens but yeah overall it's not a fast i mean lens by any means it's it's pretty poor in low light it's, it's not really good in low light but it's not also a, a really bad as well i think people who actually get this lens will definitely get it for a certain reason. I mean, they will know why they're going for this type of lens. I managed to dial in and, I mean, obtain some footages for you guys to also see what is happening. So you're not only going to be getting my thoughts or review on this, you're also going to be seeing some sample footages like this one. It's not a lens that I would say, no, this is Holy Trinity. This is, I mean, the beast of lenses. This is the only lens you need. Uh, if I say that, I'll be lying to you. I think this lens will purposely help people who are more into vlogging. I mean, those hey guys, welcome to my channel. I do cooking tutorial, those type of people. <laughs> so this will really help people who are more into, I mean, vlogs. And people who also want to, even photography, I believe it can do the job as long as you know the type of photographs that you you, you want. In the, I mean, the, the, uh, you know, wide angle photos. They are pretty cool. It does not have any image stabilization. That's the first thing that I would like to, I mean, put out here. There's no image stabilization. So if you are someone that you rely on handheld type of shot without gimbal, uh, it's really going to be a problem, especially this being a wide angle. So yeah, that's the downside. The second downside is the autofocus system. It's pretty noisy. I, I'm not going to... It's okay. Somehow it's okay, but... You get to hear the autofocus cry. Like when you really focus, it's it's just annoying. It's it's crazy. And if you are someone that normally mounts your microphone on top of a camera, trust me, you will pick all that type of I mean autofocus noises. Okay, in terms of quality, sharpness, um, bokeh, let me not really say it can produce a great bokeh. Well, it depends, cause. The only time I was able to achieve a, a nice bokeh on, on, on the images was when I went closer to a subject. Not really close because it's not a micro lens, but you have to be a little bit closer to your subject. And then zoom all the way to 24, focus on a particular subject, and I believe it will get you a little bit of depth of feel, but not so much. If you are really buying a, this particular lens for those blurry backgrounds this is not the lens for you man this is this is really not the lens for you i managed to get some cool pictures i went out with this some few moments ago and the pictures that came out were pretty cool man bear in mind these images i edited i've edited all the images that i'm uploading it's it was a bit flat so i had to put in my i mean presets and here are the footages that i managed to obtain so yeah as you guys can see it's pretty decent it's clean Nothing to really complain about. I mean, as long as you have a great camera that can also produce great quality, I believe this lens will also hold up. But there's a downside, okay? This lens is purposely for crop sensor cameras. So what that simply means is, is for APS-C. 
So this one that I have in my hands now is um, it's, it's for Canaan, not for Nikon, not for any other ones. But you get the same type also for Nikons and other brands as well. But this particular one is for Canaan. So this one is an APS-C lens. Even if you get the one for Canaan or Nikon or whatsoever, it's APS-C. I'm not sure what is the magic here or what is the distraction here. What happens is when you place this lens on a full frame camera, you get some crazy blacks. I don't know, it's, it's more like a fish eye type of look. So you, you, get, you really get some crazy, I mean, looks and I, it doesn't really, it's not professional. This is not the type of image you can actually submit to a client or even on, maybe for social media, maybe. So here is how I rigged up. I mean, here is everything in place when I was going out for the shoot. So yeah, I was running on the Canon US R with uh, the, the lens itself, which is 10 to 24 SP Tamron. And there was also an ND, that's the red ring. So there was an ND filter because there was, I mean, crazy harsh sunlight and I, I needed the ND. So yeah, that's the red ring you see in here. So as you guys can see this photo here, when you zoom all the way to 10, 10 millimeter, you get to see, I don't know where these blacks are coming from, but it really acts like a fish eye type of lens. And you guys can also see that even my ND filter is even showing in the image. So I don't know what is actually happening here, but yeah, it is what you obtain when you pair this lens on a full frame body. So I really believe if you put this lens on a crop sensor like the Canon 600D, 700D, I mean 850D, 90D, and then when it comes to the Nikon side, the D3200, the Sony side is the Sony A60, what, what. Those type of cameras will actually give you some great images without producing this type of effect here. Once you move away to, let's say from 15 millimeter, this, this type of, I mean, problems go away and then you tend to obtain some great images. So let me not say that this lens is pretty wide. On a full frame so on a full frame it's crop scene and then you also have to zoom in to 15 in order to achieve some great i mean photos overall i got nothing to complain about it's a cheap lens it's not an expensive lens by any means i picked this up on ebay i can't actually remember the price but it was pretty cheap it does the job i think this lens will serve a great purpose for someone who wants to Upgrade from the regular kit lens, the 1855s. Well, this will probably, I mean, it will do the job great better than the 1855s. So, yeah, if you are someone as well who got, I mean, enough money, I would pretty suggest you look up to, I mean, more better range than this one. Here are the sample footages as well. I hope you do like this. And if you are new on the channel, help me click on all the buttons, the likes, the subscribes, and I would pretty appreciate your love and support, man. Thank you very much for coming, guys. I really appreciate you. I mean, I know I've been repeating my words, but I really do. Thank you very much for coming, guys. I guess I'll catch you guys in the next one. Be safe. Peace.